Um, so, so as they just announced me, I'm a local photojournalist. I've been working in the Seattle area for about 14 years. And um, I've kind of seen and experienced um, so many things in this community. It's a really unique profession because it allows you to have experiences that are far above your pay grade. You know, your pay grade is kind of here. But the things you get to witness and be part of are absolutely, absolutely amazing. So, power of photography. What we saw there was one year's worth of our favorite photos from uh, Seattle PI uh, that were taken by my coworker Jordan, uh, former coworker Jordan and I. Um, and it's a noisy visual world out there. Um, we are bombarded with images constantly. Um, the challenge as a visual journalist or somebody who's out there with a camera documenting the world is to figure out a way to make your imagery rise above that noise because it's very noisy out there. Um, I stumbled across this recently, which I thought was really fascinating, that um, National Geographic has the highest engagement um, of pretty much any publication out there on social media. And this article I came across talked about why is that, and people were having all these analyses of why National Geographic has such a huge social media engagement. Um, you know, there were charts, and I mean, you can see, if you look at numbers there, it really is kind of off the charts when you're comparing to BuzzFeed, Bleacher Report, Huffington Post. But the reality is there's a huge appetite for visuals, for quality visuals in, in this noisy place. Um, so social media, you look at social media and really what social media is, is it's photography. Um, you look back at Facebook, Flickr, Flickr really took off because they were sharing photos. Facebook really became prominent when it became easy to share photos. Uh, Instagram, it's all photography, right? So. Photography is a very social thing, and it is very much about building community. Community is a big part of photography. Photography is sharing. That's what we do. We're out there exploring, um, learning, seeing, witnessing, bearing witness, and our skill set and our technical wizardry that we have in our hands allows us to then share what we witness and experience. And like I said, photography really is about community and community building. So in my role, I try to use photography as a tool to educate people, empower them, and make them think. Um, photography is instant communication, as we all know. Uh, when you're reading an article, you have a time investment. You have to sit there and commit the time to read it. When you look at a video, um, even an autoplay video that pops up in your Facebook feed, also you have to commit time to sit there. Photography is instant communication. It can instantly make you feel a way of, have a feeling of, you know, wonder, fear, magic, hope. I mean, there's so many um, emotions that can be um, felt just by looking at an image. Uh, anybody here who is, lives in Seattle probably heard about the tragedy on the Aurora Bridge recently. It was terrible. It was awful. This is not the kind of thing I enjoy pointing my lens at. But as this tragic situation unfolded um, and the story started coming out about what happened, and th those that are not from here don't know, there was a head-on collision between a bus of international students and um, a tourist vehicle at Ride the Ducks. It was really, it was awful. 
But, and people really kind of paid a lot of attention to it and cared and um, the community kind of, Seattle kind of rallied around the victims. People donated blood. But people were looking for some type of visual that spoke to the hope of the situation there. And for some reason, I saw on social media this photograph that I took. S people started talking about it, talking about the firefighter and the way he's carrying and holding this young woman. And it ended up TV stations did stories about it. And um, it, was a, it was, you know, people were just looking for some type of hopeful moment in a, in a terrible tragedy. I just got, I'm going to read this. I just got an email um, from this firefighter's sister, in fact. It says, that hero in your photograph is my brother. You captured the essence of my brother and have brought to the forefront what we all know about him, caring, dedicated, determined, and the kindest person we know. I've just gathered myself from the emotions your photo brought to me and would like to know if there is a way that we can get a copy to share with our family. So that photo was able to pull an emotion out of people. Uh, also, you've been looking at it for quite a while. It's a terrible scene. Photography, you're also able to capture emotions that are wonderful and beautiful. This was a sailor who was aboard the uh, US Navy uh, Abraham Lincoln and was here seeing his newborn child for the first time. There's power in photography. There's power in pointing your lens at life, the world, people, and being able to share that. Simple moments, family moments, you know, a couple embracing in their home, that's powerful to me. That speaks to emotion. And if you can capture that, you know, I hear in the world of photography right now, I hear so many people just constantly talking about the technology and the gear and all that kind of stuff, which is you know, important to what we do, but sometimes you just gotta put on the brakes and think about how you're communicating and what your images are saying and if you're being successful with that. This was when um, same-sex marriage leg legislation passed here in Washington State. You know, People were very emotional and uh, using my camera was capturing that. This year, this situation is a uh, young boy who was severely injured in a car wreck and came back to thank all the um, emergency room staff, uh, you know, after he was better. And you know, I love, I love cap capturing little moments like that. That's, to me, that's the essence, those little expressions that kind of suggest something or tell you something about a person. Photography can also elicit emotions and you know this was a very highly charged emotional scene this was a may day rally here in seattle it's kind of a tradition here now where our town our town gets a little bit rowdy on may day i always tend to be in the middle of it um this was also from may day this is the federal building and they were smashing the windows out with rocks so it is an unusual profession i have i do get to put myself into very unusual yet often fascinating scenes and scenarios. Um, this one was also, this was during the Occupy movement, and this woman, she was in her mid-80s, and there was some chaos going on in the streets, and she got pepper sprayed in the face by police. And this caused quite a bit of emotion, um, so much so that the following day, the then Seattle mayor actually gave a press conference on the steps of um, City Hall, addressing this photo because there was such an uproar about what happened in this situation. He's also, he's also friends with this woman too, which was really kind of unusual thing that happened here. This was in Texas. This was at a camp for um, severely disabled children. And again, it's just that little tiny moment, you know, that little, that little interaction that I find is kind of that magical intersection when you're looking at and talking about photography. As expressions, it's all about expressions. This was um, a few years back, a, big, a little guy made a big dunk and everybody talked about it. But yeah, emotion, moment, that's what it's about to me. This was the Oso landslide. 
which also was another big tragic thing here in Washington State. I kind of embedded myself in that story. I have a, uh, a Volkswagen van and I took it up there and parked it in Darrington the community and just kind of lived out of my van for almost three weeks, kind of embedded myself in that story. Um, I just felt a real connection to it. You know, I'm from a small town and And the president came and made a visit. You know, the imagery helped to show the scope and scale of this thing too. It happened on a Saturday morning when, when I'm assuming most people that work for FEMA or the federal response agencies were you know, probably ha planning their weekend off. And the initial response ended up being a little bit slow. The locals really rallied, but the initial response was not what it could have been. But once I think people started seeing that amount of devastation, the response highly increased. So photography, the power of photography, it's about emotion, it's about connection. It's about connection and understanding. And I'm gonna go through a few photographs here that I think kind of, kind of embody that, kind of sh suggest that or show that a little bit. Back in um, 2001, the Twin Towers were crashed into by airplanes. And at the time, people in our country, Americans, we were very angry, right? And our anger seemed to be directed at this little country out in Central Asia, Afghanistan. So I got sent there and pretty much my goal or my marching orders were to capture the people there and show who they are because they aren't, you know, the percentage of people living in the country that are actually extremist radicals is, you know, it's a, it's a small sliver. The rest of it really is regular people live there trying to lead regular lives. So using photography, I tried to help people understand and connect. These young boys here, they're actually watching a, um, a U.S. air raid that's happening. And then, you know, it, it, they, they were definitely a, a war-torn region at the time. This is at a hospital in Kabul. <coughs> so using this imagery, using these photos, I was trying to help people here in, back in the United States connect with people there and understand them because that's how we deal with anger ultimately. This man here was busted for uh, trying to smuggle drugs out of the country. And so he has a big bag of drugs there. And he was taken into the, the town center and kind of, they gave him his punishment there. Let's see, I'm gonna go a little faster here. Y'all looking at the news probably have heard that there's been some trouble in Afghanistan in the last few days. The town of Kunduz just fell, um, which this is Kunduz here actually. When it fell last time, I was there and uh, it just fell back to the Taliban now and there's a lot of fighting and a lot of tragic things happening there right now. This was at the US Embassy in Kabul and this man, he, um, he was a, a caretaker for the building and it was burned and ransacked and he found this little melted American flag in a drawer. And these were some refugees that um, relocated to Seattle. Seattle is a great place for opening its arms to people in troubled regions and countries. This was a funeral at a, for a, a, military, a military funeral and the family allowed me to go and photograph the, the burial. This is a story I did on um, undocumented immigrants that he here in the Seattle area that were part of a basketball league. Again, trying to use visuals to show people that, hey, you know, these folks that you may have this bias about or not understand are actually, you know, they're still out there playing basketball. They're re leading regular lives. They enjoy the same things we do. This was uh, from the league which was also a challenge because a lot of the people didn't want their faces shown, right? So, you know, and I had to respect that. So as you saw in the previous image, I had to really work to not show faces. And this was also part of a, a story along the lines of a, 
uh, undocum undocumented immigration in the Seattle area. But photography can also move people. It can make them act. It is a powerful tool. This was down in uh, Mexico, and this young man was riding on a train, on the top of a train, trying to make it to, to uh, ultimately the United States. There's a significant um, border immigration issue at Mexico's southern border also. You know, you hear so much about the border here with the United States, but there are floods of people, at least at this time, that were crossing from Central America into Mexico, ultimately headed to the US. But this guy fell off a train and lost his legs in the, in the accident. And at the time, I was working at the Houston Chronicle newspaper, and this was published. And about a week later, we got a letter from uh, a local lawyer who ended up purchasing a house and property for this guy back in his native country. So it can help people to understand. Photography can help people to act. It can push them. Understanding. You know, it helps you to understand the people that live under the bridges. <coughs> because typically, we don't immerse ourselves in that world, right? When you're driving under the convention center here in Seattle, you see all those tents, you see all those people, but you don't necessarily consciously think about them or put yourself in that world. But photography can take you there. We can take you there to the tent city here in Seattle when it floods during a big storm and everybody's possessions, the few possessions that they have, are suddenly waterlogged. This was, a, 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 this was all kind of a series. This was on homelessness. Looking at where, you know, families go into these cubicles in this warehouse. Uh, you know, this is one of the solutions for families that they, they've come up with in them. Um, you know, the people that are trying to, trying to help these folks. This moment really, really um, moved me, actually. This was a, uh, a funeral for King County's um, unknowns, essentially, for people that die on the streets. Every two years, the King County Medical Examiner has a, essentially what amounts to a mass burial. And I believe this year they had around 260 people they buried inside of one coffin. This was a, um, a totem pole raising here in Seattle. And those of you that are from here may remember too the the uh, native, native wood carver that was shot. And um, the community kind of really r responded to that. A lot of people were upset about it. But they channeled that into this you know, art project, this native project, uh, to build this beautiful totem pole as a tribute to him. It now stands in front of the Space Needle. Those um, two kids in the background are actually my daughter. <laughs> This was from a project I did on, on farming. I'm really fascinated by where our food comes from, and it's a project, it's actually a long-term thing I'm working on. I'm hoping to do a book on it eventually. So this is, you know, helping, to people under, helping people to understand this is where your food comes from. You know, of course, I'm not really necessarily visiting the big factory farms, but I'm really fascinated right now with farmers markets, farmers market level producers which is what most of these folks are. So, you know, photography can take you to amazing places, but it's a great tool for you as the picture taker to take people to other places. I'm gonna go through these real quick. Got some great stories behind a lot of these. This is the highest point of Mount Rainier, Columbia Crest. I climbed Mount Rainier earlier this summer and using my camera, I was able to take people there. Here's sunrise on Mount Rainier. It's so stunning up there. You know, you're climbing and through the night and sunrise, that little first bit of sunrise. You know, this is, this is like with a 1.4 lens at maybe a 30th of a second at ISO 12,000. So really pushing the camera there to get this frame. That's the, that's the summit of Rainier. Airplane flying over the Space Needle or standing on top of the Space Needle as they repaint it. Again, the power of photography is I can take people to places that maybe they can't go. But, you know, somehow I've been able to convince somebody to let me go there. 
underwater diving. This is actually through a window at a pool at the King County Aquatic Center. I'm sure some of you in the room have shot through that window before. This is from a commercial airliner, actually, um, flying over southern Utah. You all can go there. You know, we've all flying airplanes, but it's about paying attention to the details and seeing these things out in the world. You know, flying, over, flying into an airport and saying, hey, look at all those cars and that one little green car, click. This is actually from a helicopter, so I'm not shooting through a dirty airplane window on this one. This is pretty photogenic. The uh, Seattle Sounders, every time they, uh, the uh, fans march to the match, and they put smoke and flares, and it makes for great pictures. As you can tell by the person there with their illuminated iPhone trying to capture it also. I'll go through a few more pictures here. Uh, this was interesting. This was a um, uh, project that I worked on actually resulted in a book uh, about a statue back in my hometown of Santa Fe, New Mexico. And people had a lot of interest in this statue, but were unable to go there. So I, was, I started a blog and I blogged about the whole like, building of the statue and then the traveling of it on a flatbed truck up back up to Santa Fe and then the installation of it and all this crazy story that surrounded it. Uh, CNN, Los Angeles Times, all these other publications also ended up doing a story on it. It was too long to get into right now. But. So these are people seeing that statue for the first time. So ultimately, ultimately I think what I want to just convey to everybody is, you know, as you are out there with your camera and you're out there pointing it at people, places, things, think about, think about what it is you're trying to capture. People always ask me, they say, what makes a good photograph? Well, you know, there's all the obvious things. There's, you know, perspective, you know, lighting, proper exposure, you know, being, being technically savvy enough to know you know, what ISO to use and what lighting condition and all these things. But, but the thing I don't hear enough about and the thing that I see, I don't see much of on platforms such as like Instagram and such it are moments, real interactive moments, real interaction with people. I see so many photos of things and stuff, but I don't feel as if I'm seeing many moments of that kind of when that magic comes together when people are interacting. I'm going to Got like 10 more photos. I'm going to breeze through these real quick. This is at the Super Bowl in New York when the Seahawks won. This was the fail Mary uh, football call um, where one ref is like touchdown, one is not touchdown. And became this big, chaotic, confusing sit situation. I'm like at the, on the sidelines and I actually have no idea what's happening here. More Seahawks. Do a lot of Seahawks photography. Seahawks winning the Super Bowl. Super Bowl parade. And uh, this is when they lost. And this scene here is in the bowels of the stadium in Phoenix. And here Russell Wilson is looking longingly at the tr Vince Lombardi trophy as the opposing coach is walking away with it. And that's it. You can follow me on social media if you want.